Hi, I'm Val Hart in San Antonio, Texas, founder of Val Hart and Friends at ValHart.com. Welcome to The Real Dr. Doolittle Show, the show for animals and the people who love them. I've been called a real-life Dr. Doolittle many times in my career as an expert animal communicator, behaviorist, pet psychic, and master healer. My mission and passion is to improve the lives of animals the world over by helping humans learn how to speak their language, how to understand their viewpoints, and heal. After all, our love of animals helps us be better humans, and the more balanced and healthy we are, the more balanced and healthy they can be, too. Be sure and look for my CDs on iTunes, and to find out more about my work and to receive your free Quick Start Animal Talk course, just go to my website at valhart.com. While you're there for a limited time, you can also apply for a complimentary Happy Animal Assessment Session. And if you want to learn how to be your own Dr. Doolittle, check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system available now on my website at valhart.com. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Val Hart, the real Dr. Doolittle, and today I'm speaking with Dr. Harvey. A pioneer in holistic and natural nutrition for animals, Dr. Harvey Cohen is a physician with a deep love for animals and a profound interest in keeping them healthy. Distressed by the increase in cancer, obesity, and other chronic ailments in animals, he's successfully treated these conditions through proper diet and nutrition. Dr. Harvey believes that foods for animals should not contain preservatives, dyes, coloring agents, fillers, and artificial ingredients. So he began creating products for animals that contain only human consumption grade ingredients. Thousands of Dr. Harvey's loyal clients have seen the amazing benefits of feeding animals naturally. In 2001, Dr. Harvey received the award for Outstanding Service and Commitment to Advancing and Promoting Avian Medicine and Stewardship by the Association of Avian Veterinarians. You can find out more about his work at drharveys.com or call toll-free 866-362-4123. Welcome to the show, Dr. Harvey. I'm so excited to talk to you. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I discovered your products and your work a couple of years ago when my 18-month-old puppy um, was actually diagnosed with terminal kidney failure. And I had been feeding him what I thought was a good diet. And uh, anyway, I'm going to interrupt you. I, yeah. I tell everybody that calls with kidney problems, never use the word kidney failure. Ah. That's a terrible word. It is. And it scares it? people. It's very A nicer scary. word is a compromised kidney issue. Thank you. Yes, it, that's what we were struggling with. Anyway, I wound up getting some of your good dog food, uh, the Miracle Dog Food, I think. Right. Um, and it was certainly a nice part of turning his health around. And today he's a very he healthy, happy dog. And that was uh, about two years ago. And we, we do not have a compromised kidney now, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much for your work. No, you're well. No, I'm sure he has to thank you and your family. So. Yeah. Well, we we're a we are a family. So I want to talk a little bit about your company just to get started. What compelled you to create Dr. Harvey's Healthy Formulations? It's quite a deal to create a company like this. What compelled well, you to do that? Basically, you know, I, I thought that uh, when you look at canned and kibble food. The, the consumer can read a label, but they don't have a clue really what's going in that can or kibble. Right. You know, it can say meat or meat byproducts or chicken or chicken meal or chicken byproducts. Mm -hmm. That's number one. They really don't know what's going in the can or the right. kibble food. That's right. And number two, quality. When somebody, when I, you know, I took a much harder approach. Matter of fact, I thought I took an impossible approach. I asked people to go out and get the only two things that can go bad is the protein mm -hmm. and the oil. Mm -hmm. Rule of thumb, in the whole world, all oil goes rancid at room temperature. Mm, wow. So, you know, and an easy way to explain to people is that you and I get old at room temperature. Yeah. It's called <laughs> oxidation. Yeah. Most people sure. never would think of that. No, it's no. called oxidation. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. everything gets old. That's how, you know, nature and God made it. Right. Everything gets old at room temperature. So oil or fat goes rancid at room temperature. Okay. 
So I ask the people, please go out and get oil and refrigerate it. And then number two, rotate oils. Every oil has a, a, a different background, we'll call it, or composition. So <clears throat> omega-3 from salmon, sardine, or krill is much different, okay, than flaxseed. And flaxseed oil is much different than sesame. So I ask people to rotate oils once a week, not to get them crazy, but to offer a different free fatty acid or an oil each week. And again, refrigerate it. Same thing with protein. Every protein that nature and God put on earth is different. Salmon is different than tuna, mm -hmm. and tuna is different than cod and tilapia, mm -hmm. and beef is different than turkey and chicken, mm -hmm. and tofu is different than lentils. Right. So you're offering your companion a different concentration of amino acids by rotating. So there too, I ask people, Please rotate your proteins once a week. Right. And it's not for variety, which would probably be a good idea anyhow, but it's actually because every protein is different. Yes. So, you know, th th that was the premise. It should be fresh, most important. So the consumer buys their companion fresh protein and oil. Mm -hmm. And you can see it. It's human consumption. It's fresh, you just bought it, and you make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once again, I, it, it was a very difficult approach to ask people to go out and buy the protein and the oil. Yeah. But, but I deal, uh, this company deals with true companion animals okay. that the owners, uh, that these are their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very important, the word companion animals. They absolutely, every one of the people who buy our products, their animals are their companions, which is another great word, companion. Yes, yes it is. Uh, now you've got natural health foods, treats, herbal grooming products, and herbal supplements for dogs, cats, birds, and horses. Right. An herbalist and a nutritional expert for right. companion animals, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's basically how I started. Okay. Because... Uh, it, it was a lot easier to look at what, what, what the commercial food offers with questionable protein, questionable fat, dyes, preservatives. Plus, uh, once again, it, it could be sitting on a shelf for six months. Yeah. So I, I always wonder how people think that, you know, th th there is no preservative in there or there is no chemicals in there. You know, it's just, it can't be done. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So... Telling your patients or telling people to refrigerate their oils, rotate them, and do different offer different amino acid proteins. Well, different proteins each week, yeah. Yeah, each week, and then make it fresh. A fresh um, meaning they're buying human consumption. Mm -hmm. Fresh, they can see it, they can taste it, they can eat it. I mean, you know, I, I think it's a no-brainer mm -hmm. to go out of your way again for whether it's a child or a companion animal. To, uh, to to buy fresh. Yes. Yeah. It always amazes me when people think they can just dump kibble in a bowl and their animal should be healthy. <laughs> you know, that's all the attention they get. Well, that's the fast um, food world. Yeah. No, yeah. In, you know, once again, you know, you, you have X amount of people who absolutely eat breakfast and lunch and fast food mm -hmm. and maybe supper. Right. You know, and then you have X amount of people who really see the value of buying fresh and making it. Right, right. Mm. So what do you think is the one most important change a guardian can make then? Uh, always where nutrition. Where they are right now to improve well, health and longevity. But it's always nutrition. Uh, in other okay. words, if it was a child, uh, a hyperactive child or a child with some problem, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to ch first change their diet keep them away from, again, dyes and preservatives and fresh. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, changing somebody's diet, be it a human or a companion animal, right. it would absolutely be your first step, whether it was a pediatrician okay. or it was grandma. Uh, it wouldn't matter much. Okay. Uh, eating better, you know, we are what we eat or we are what we put inside of us. Right, right. 
it's amazing how much the food and what's in it affects us and at what level. Yeah, and we know that as people. Why wouldn't we apply that to animals too? Okay, so um, so someone that's been feeding kibble or canned food, uh, you know, getting them Alpo at the store or something like that, what would you say they could do to begin to make that change? Well, they'd have to want to. You know, well, well, mindset, yeah. Right, you, you have to make, you know, no matter what happens in life, it becomes a judgment or a value judgment. Right. You know, if you really feel in your heart that feeding your children or your family or your companion animal uh, better or fresh or without chemicals or preservatives is the right thing to do, then you'll do it. Yeah. You know, and if you think it doesn't really matter much, then you won't do it. Yeah. And then you'll be going to the vet when and having them <laughs> having problems and wondering why. Yes. Okay. Well, I think it's common sense to, uh, again, go out of your way for all of us, the entire world, by the way, not just companion animals, but all of us, right. to eat food that is with less chemicals, less preservatives, and fresh. Okay. Okay. I understand. That makes makes great sense to me. So let's talk about these diseases, cancer, obesity, kidney disease. It is... These these things are skyrocketing. I mean, it's hard to even find hardly, you know, uh, a healthy animal uh, that's been alive for a few years. <laughs> uh, and I'm laughing. I, this is not funny. It's very, very tragic. Um, can you speak to that for just a moment? Well, I think most of you are degenerative diseases or, you know, it's, it's really interesting. There's a, like I said, the word about a compromised kidney versus kidney failure. Yeah. Uh, most people forget that, and I'll give you two great analogies, uh, that things are cumulative in life. Relationships are cumulative, marriages, bringing children up. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, even at work, it's cumulative, the people around you and how you interact. Mm-hmm. So back to, and here's the two great analogies. Somebody wakes up with sciatica, which is usually pain down the leg. Okay. And you go to an orthopedist, and they do an MRI or a CAT scan or an X-ray, and you have a ruptured disc. And the doctor says uh, you have a ruptured disc. Mm-hmm. Even though it started Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock when you woke up, it took 20 years for that disc to go bad. Mm-hmm. So even though you got your symptoms Monday at 8 o'clock, yeah. it didn't happen Monday at 8 o'clock. Monday at 8 o'clock was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing as uh, somebody relatively healthy, 56 years old, runs, drops dead of a heart attack Tuesday at 9 Mm o'clock. Well, trust me, it took 50 years to drop dead Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Tuesday at 9 o'clock, again, was the straw that broke the camel's back. So most diseases, you know, are cumulative they did not happen overnight. Yeah. And again, I don't think people think that way. You know, people, again, they got sciatica. They think they ruptured the disc Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Took 20 years. Mm-hmm. Or somebody with a heart condition or arterial or atherosclerosis or uh, a decompensating heart or cardiomyopathy or high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Didn't happen overnight. Yeah. It took a long time to happen. Right. So that's what's important to answer your question about nutrition with all degenerative diseases. You ready? You've got to start doing something in the beginning. You can't wait for the shoe to drop. Yeah. So if we keep doing the same things we've been doing, we're going to get more of the same results. Well, all you have to do is look at the amount of people, insurance, hospitals, the cost of insurance, this nation is not a healthy nation. No. No, it's not. Yeah. Mm. So wh- whether we're relating it to companion animals that we feed mm-hmm. or we're relating it to fellow human beings in the world, not just the United States, mm-hmm. yeah, we are what we eat. Yeah. And our animals are too. Not even a question. And it's a lot easier. Here we go again. It's a lot easier, and it has nothing to do with doctor bills or vet bills or 
health insurance that's skyrocketing. It's a lot easier to feed us and our companion animals good than to end up being sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Oh, let's talk about supplements. So I think, you know, so much of our food these days is pretty much compromised. You know, it either has some hidden something in it that's not necessarily healthy right. or it was grown on poor soil or, you know, who knows what. Um, so talk about supplements for a moment. Supplements became a business because of the poor food industry. No, it's really, it's a catch-22. Okay. In other words, if I discuss supplements, we're justifying that we're eating bad. Mm-hmm. It's really hard, you know. And then on the opposite, if you sell supplements throughout the world, right, and you make a living on it, oh, you tell everybody how important they are. Sure. But, we're, 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 again, we're, we're chasing our tail. The idea is to eat well. If you want a supplement, that's fine. But to use the word supplement to justify that the, the companion animals or the animals and the humans are eating poorly, well, I don't know if that's really an answer. Okay. You know, I have supplements because, uh, you know, it's interesting. I almost never sell supplements, ever, interesting word, ever sell supplements to animals that are eating naturally. Mm-hmm. We sell a ton of supplements for people who, who animals are either on canned or kibble food. Ah, uh, that's an interesting distinction, isn't it? Sure. So, well, yeah. why, make, why try to make a living mm-hmm. dishonestly? In other words, the, I tease people that, that the animals who are eating naturally, where you're buying the protein and the oil and you have whatever, 8% grain to brush the intestines relative to colon cancer and maybe 18, 20% vegetable, you know, why sell them supplements? They're eating better than the people in the United States. Mm-hmm, yeah. I often think that about my dog. Oh, everybody <laughs>, laughs. They say that their dog is eating better than them. Yep. And their cat. Oh, no, absolutely true. You know, you talk about little stories. Absolutely true. The people constantly tease me that their dog is eating better or their cat is eating better than them. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, that might bring you a new opportunity. <laughs> you could sell the miracle food for people. Oh. And uh, we could tell Fido to move over and just, uh, you know, I mean, seriously, well, and we can eat their food anyway, as long as it's, we don't do as well with raw food, uh, as far as meat goes, raw meat. Right, as far as meat, you know, when people hear the word raw, I tease people also, great analogy. Mm -hmm. You've got 90% of the world eats sushi. (laughs) True. No, no. Uh, and this is not about people eating raw, but it's about animals. And, and I tell people who are afraid to feed raw, it's called the best of two worlds. Mm. Right? Pan fry it rare. Ah. So it's not really cooked, and it's not raw. And psychologically, they feel better that the heat killed everything. Okay. You know, when you look at, at your, your canned and kibble food, I mean, it's at 200 degrees. There's nothing left. You know, that was the other part, without even discussing kibble food uh, that's at who knows how many hundreds of degrees or canned food at 180 degrees. By the time the cooking process is done, there's nothing left. Yeah. No enzymes and then the... No, there's nothing left. No, no. If people would really think about it, Mm -hmm. there is absolutely nothing left. What's left in there? Yeah. I got it. Uh, since you brought up the topic of raw, let's talk about raw food for just a minute. So sure. both diets, things like that. Um, are sure. you a fan? Uh, I think, you know, it's interesting on the BOF diet because they're basing it on wolves. And it's almost true. Uh, well, I say almost. You, you need X amount of fiber. You know, we're not talking about, you know, 20%, 30%. A grain, you're talking about 6, 8, 10% grain to brush the intestines, mm-hmm. again, relative to colon cancer and everything. Mm-hmm. And vegetables, you're talking about true vitamins and minerals, you know, maybe, maybe 20%. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're, you're getting uh, at least 70 to 80% of your raw protein. And, 
you're, you're interesting, and you're just adding some grain, okay, mm-hmm. and you're adding some vegetables. Mm-hmm. Bath is mostly on on pure raw, which you know I I, I think that it's uh, again a little too high in protein. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a good discussion. Um, let's shift gears just a little bit. Let's talk about instead of what's going into our animals, let's right. talk about what we put on our animals. So topical products, shampoos, sprays, ear washes, toothbrush, toothpaste. Right. <laughs> for well, I'll give you feeding. the greatest healing agent. You know, for you and your family, including your family, since I deal with herbs and stuff, Yeah. the number one healing agent in the whole world Next to aloe, so don't mishear me. But the number one healing agent is called calendula. Ah. And if people, you know, uh, when people call me, I, I, I never give advice. I tell them, I give them reading. They must go to Google, since I have stock in Google, so I send everybody to Google. <laughs> but, no, I, I tell everybody to read. So when we go over herbs, which we'll discuss maybe in a minute. But I would say topically. Not even a question that calendula and now those are the two best topical healing agents okay. for humans as well as animals. You know, because I teach people there is no such thing as an herb for a human or an animal. You know, it's, it's so silly. Uh, a pet shop can sell echinacea for twenty dollars and help because it's a dog on it. Mm-hmm. Right. A- and a health food store has echinacea for nine ninety five. Yeah. So I make everybody laugh and explain that God put herbs for everybody. There is not an herb for a dog or a cat. Okay. So uh, uh, when it comes to topical products, a calendula as a healing agent is my favorite, and then aloe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got it. So. You know, and the same thing with herbs. You know, we'd be on the phone for hours. The number one product used for any type of liver problem in humans as well as animals, it's called milk thistle. Yeah. You know, uh, for the immunity, I'll give you, a, I mentioned echinacea, but my favorite is called astragalus. Ah. Okay. It's my favorite for, again, a compromised immune system where you're dealing with something called T cells, T3, TH. It's sort of a, no, I think it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, vitamin C, the, the finest vitamin C for humans and animals is called ester C. It's buffered. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, Linus Pauling, forget that he got a, a Nobel Peace Prize. If you read on vitamin C, is the basement membrane of all tissues. There, too, when you have an animal that has certain conditions, it seems to be a no-brainer to put them on vitamin C. So, you know, I don't think that your herbs or your vitamins are any greatly different, whether it's a companion animal or a human. It's or, And here's the most important that I have people read. It's called per kilogram of body weight that you cannot give a dachshund what you give a basset hound. And you can't give a basset hound what you give an Akita, and you can't give an Akita what you would give a St. Bernard. So it's always based upon, and I should throw in age, should be based upon weight and age. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So do you think that making homemade food is really hard to do? We do it for rescue here. You ready? It takes eight minutes, whether you have 20 dogs or one dog. Wow. How do you do that? Well, we have a, uh, you know, I, I, I really uh, can't discuss my company, but we have a premix where you add the meat and the oil. So okay. you rehydrate the, the, the grain and the vegetables. Okay. You add the meat and the oil. It takes about eight minutes, give or take, eight minutes to rehydrate vegetable and grain. Okay. You add the meat and the oil, and that's it. Wow. Well, that sounds simple. No, it really is. Okay. You know, it's like what you asked about people who are feeding canned or or, or kibble food. Right. Uh, it becomes a, a, a again a, a judgment call. 
right. you know, do they want to go out of their way to buy the protein and the oil fresh or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The time involved, more, more, people spend more time, uh, forget about eight hours at work making money or two hours a day commuting to work mm-hmm. uh, to, to spend eight minutes for a companion, again, whether it's a child or a, a companion animal, no, takes no time at all. I love that you said that because, you know, I, in my practice, I often am working with people with ill animals, and I'll mention, you know, this, and we'll we'll talk about it, and there's usually a lot of resistance to it. You know, it's going to be hard. It takes too long, blah, 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 long list of excuses, but it doesn't take long, not when you're set up. You know, you, all you have to do is do the prep work, and it's and it's a done deal, you know, so I like that you said that. Well, but but that's being honest. It's yeah. it, 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 it's the human race. If you don't have the same eight minutes, or or to interesting, or to call grandma mm-hmm. and see how she's doing, mm-hmm. or to speak to your brother, mm-hmm. or to speak to a best friend because you're busy with some nonsense. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's people. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting that I prefaced it. Everybody that we really deal with here. They are absolutely companion animals. They're friends and children. Yeah. The eight minutes, or I, I got a better one. If it was 20 minutes, they absolutely have time. Because yeah. anybody who doesn't have 20 minutes in there, again, their day where they're spending eight, nine hours making money and two hours commuting and who knows what other nonsense they're doing, I would imagine that they have eight minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so you start your dinner, <laughs> or your family's dinner, and start their dinner too, and they'll be eating and finished long before you finished making, you know, finishing your meal. Right. Um, yeah. It, I it's not hard at all. It, 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 okay. It's you know, it, it, it's you know what the individual wants to do or, or not do. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you for for calling us on that. Good. Um, does diet really affect longevity? Sure. Can you tell sure. us the story you know, about that so we get an idea? Well, we it, it, again, we are what we eat. Whether we're predisposing because of diet obesity mm-hmm. or we're predisposing diet relative to arterial or haunting of the arteries in humans and animals mm-hmm. or, or because of the chemicals, to say the least, the chemicals that, that are in, in sprayed, insecticide, herbicide, I mean, there's no end to it. You know, they, they were a great analogy. Here's another great analogy, which I was part of. In California, they were spraying ALAR on apples. And in court, which was really interesting, terrible pesticide, mm-hmm. ALAR. And in court, they lost the case. And they had great lawyers, except they took a much wrong a really terrible approach, and I'll tell you what, it was ridiculous. Their approach was how much ALAR is on one apple. And they were right, by the way. There isn't a lot of ALAR on one apple. Mm -hmm. But nobody eats one apple in 40 years. Right. So it was the cumulative effect of ALAR on apples. And we won the case hands down. I mean, it was it was actually ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to make an analogy, how much ALR is on one apple? They were right. There wasn't a lot of ALR in one apple, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of ALR on sixty apples. Yeah. yeah. So when it comes to the food and longevity, it's the same thing that you you can't have a, a, a compromised kidney or a heart condition or especially liver condition mm-hmm. or even predisposing degenerative arthritis relative to the minerals or lack of minerals in the food. Right. That, including humans, we are what we eat when it comes to even aging. Okay. That makes sense. For animals with a long history of digestive problems or skin conditions, which is a big one these days, and allergies, right. what, what can y'all do to help? Well, the oils. I'll tell you my favorite oil when it comes to a skin condition. And okay. humans, too. Yep. I like omega-3. Okay. And omega-3 comes from three sources. Salmon, sardine, or krill, K-R-I-L-L. Mm-hmm. That's a great supplement. That's number one. Uh, digestively, to help 
my favorite of all, which is a live culture, which I put all, I mean, it's the best of all three worlds when I tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. It's called yogurt. Oh. You know, women are familiar with yogurt. If you're on an antibiotic, mm-hmm. every gynecologist in the world begs you to please take yogurt. Right. right. I'm using yogurt. You ready? It's a probiotic. It has some extra calcium in it. And most important, it's alkaline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Great for humans and great for companion animals. Mm. Okay. You know, again, if we think out common sense things, you know, it's called do no harm. Interesting in life Mm -hmm. when you make a judgment call for somebody else or somebody pays you a fee for your knowledge. Interesting word about do no harm. Using yogurt is a no-brainer. Rotating oils is a no-brainer for a skin condition. Uh, To to say the least, omega-3, maybe, maybe, the companion animal of the human, one of your important things for skin is zinc. Maybe you'll, you'll add some zinc. Okay. You know, but each, each case or each individual human and animal, you know, you look at the, the total case and you see is it, you know, 100% diet, is it lack of something in the diet? Mm-hmm. You know, is it chemicals? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got it. Oh, so can you talk for just a minute about grains and no grains? Oh, we, we talked about raw and cooked food. Yeah, I, 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 I did grain for a reason. You know, I use, in my formula, it comes to six, actually six and a half percent grain. I okay. use it, you know, grain got a bad rap, first of all, because grain was being used 78 percent. I won't name the companies. But their first two ingredients were were corn and wheat Mm -hmm. for 50 years. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting why I never, you know, I never, when I lecture, never knock another company, ever. Mm -hmm. Under no circumstance will I ever do that. Yeah. Dogs were living on corn and wheat for 50 years, and the truth is they weren't dying in the street. You know, it's very interesting when somebody has an agenda and it becomes sales and money, mm-hmm. you know, I would never knock another company that used corn and wheat. I don't think that they have a clue about nutrition. Don't mishear me now. But were the dogs or the cats dying in the street living on corn and wheat? They absolutely weren't. Yeah. They weren't healthy. Right. But they were not dying. Very interesting word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to answer your question... Uh, using six and a half, eight percent grain mm-hmm. is a no-brainer. It's it just great, a little extra protein, and it's absolutely a brush for the intestines as fiber. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So it's like an intestinal brush. <laughs> well, you're talking about it's like spitting in the ocean. If you think about eight percent grain or six percent grain, I mean. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it has a reason. That was my point. There's a reason to the madness instead of, oh, absolutely no grain, you know, or absolutely only feed raw. You know, I I, I think it's the best of all the worlds Mm -hmm. that people should do. You know, it's not do it my way. I think people should think out why. Why rotate proteins? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not for variety, I said, even though it's a good one. It's because every pro salmon is different than tuna, and tuna is different than beef. Same thing with oil. You, you, variety would be a good reason, but the real reason is that flaxseed oil is different than sesame oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So back to fiber, you know, six to eight percent fiber. There's a reason for it. Okay, that makes sense. Can you tell us a story before we let you go today? A story. Mm-hmm. A story about perhaps an animal that you worked with, or. Um, Something now, there's so many stories. You know what? Uh, uh, the, your companion you mentioned with a compromised kidney or or uh, I deal uh, with animals with cancer. I, I think, you know, uh, th- these stories are really based upon the, the, the guardians, another word for owner. I never use the word owner. Uh, the guardians of our animals, which are the owners, but they're guardians. That they really do understand that when a companion animal is sick 
are there. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a great story in humans as well. You want a little story? I'll, I'll do cardiomy <laughs> heart condition, cardiomyopathy. Okay. Right. I see incredible results. Okay, using something called CoQ10 in humans as well as animals now. Something called CoQ10 mm -hmm. and L-carnitine in okay. reference to uh, cardiomyopathies or uh, aortic mitral valve or uh, uh, an aging animal that has a decompensating heart. Mm -hmm. And they're supplements. All they do is support heart function. It's not a miracle, and it's not that you and I are so smart, but if you read on CoQ10, the 30, 35 years of research, or you read on L-carnitine, they're supplements to support heart function. Okay. Really interesting. Yeah. It's not like you had mentioned before, supplements, where you're, 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 you're selling a multivitamin to make up for the nonsense that's not in food. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, like I mentioned to you, milk thistle, the number one yeah. product right. to support liver health. It's a supplement to help the body, whether it's a human or a companion animal, to help the liver. Yeah. So all these herbs or supplements are really supportive in nature when you have a condition or a disease. Okay. So yeah. the stories are that the people, the guardians of our animals, go out of their way to go to Google and read on whatever I ask them to read on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then make a judgment call. Is milk thistle indica indicated? Uh, will CoQ10 and L-carnitine help? Will vitamin C help? Will bilberry help for the eyes? You know, so no matter what it's going to be, uh, the, the individual people should do their reading. Okay. Okay. And, and make a judgment call. This is, again, their companion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we tend to get confused, I think, with so much information and some of it's contrary. You know, or one will say one thing and one says another. Or... Well, if you cut out the, the, the portion of it's all about money and sales, uh -huh. when you read on herbs or you read on the efficacy of it or what the herb is supposed to do, okay, because a lot of times you, you, you're not allowed to make a claim on an herb. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But that being said, you know, you're using them as supplements, another great word, supplements, to support the individual organ function. Right, right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's good. Do you have anything else you want to finish up with? Oh, no. I just want to thank you. Oh, <laughs> well, I want to thank you. So All right. We, we've been speaking with Dr. Harvey of drharveys.com, and I'm going to spell that just in case people want to go look you up. It's www.dr. H A R V E Y S dot C O M Dr. Harvey's dot com. And I know you have testimonials, you have information, you have a lot of wonderful products of which I have personally experienced and played with with great results. So thank you again for sharing your time and your heart with us and your love for animals. Uh, thank you again. Thanks for listening to the show. For more information or to listen to other podcasts, go to valheart.com forward slash blog. And if you're someone who values a non-invasive, holistic solution to resolving problems with your dogs, cats, and horses, and you want better behaved, healthier, and happier animals, just go to my website at valheart.com to apply for a complimentary happy animal assessment session. And be sure and remember to look for my CDs on iTunes. Learning how to talk with animals is fun and will change your life. So while you're there at my site, get my free Quick Start Animal Talk course and check out the world's first complete animal communication made easy system. May the love of animals bless you, teach you, inspire you, heal you, and reconnect you to the circle of life. <laughs>